Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Carol Landis is known primarily as the bosomy blonde movie star who offed herself over Rex Harrison. Of all the schmucks who've driven ladies to leap, the idea of killing yourself over a tool like sexy Rexy seems especially senseless. But in Hollywood's golden years, one of filmdom's most glamorous and popular stars did indeed end her life over that do-little douche. How Carol Landis came near death twice than any other Hollywood star. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Many young hopefuls dreaming of wealth and fame descended on Hollywood during its golden age. Most fell short of that dream, while others found moderate success through hard work and determination. Lovely blonde actress Carol Landis, one of World War II GI's favourite pin-ups due to her ample curves and beaming smile, fell into the latter category, but her personal life was rife with problems that would eventually overwhelm and consume her. After small parts in some major productions and leads in a handful of minor ones, Landis's beauty and athletic abilities earned her a cheesecake role in Hal Roach's campy fantasy, 1 million BC. The attention she gained from that role led her to being labelled the Ping Girl and to garnering more challenging parts in A-list pictures like Topper Returns, I Wake Up Screaming, Four Jills in a Jeep and Having Wonderful Crime. Despite appearing in 28 movies in little over a decade, Carol Landis never quite became the major Hollywood star her on-screen presence should have afforded her, although she acted in such enduring films as A Scandal in Paris and Moon Over Miami, she was most often relegated to supporting roles. Even when she played the major role in a feature, as she did, she was billed second or third behind other actors. While she was a consistently competent and sometimes genuinely impressive performer, her career never reached the heights she had hoped for. Between several failed marriages, emotional issues and her refusal to be manipulated by studios, to the degree that was common during the contract player days, Landis's life eventually took a turn that she could not face and she committed suicide but her legacy as a radiant all-American bombshell who kept the home fires burning for thousands of grateful GIs was well assured. Today, not many people have heard of Carol Landis, but her story is one of Hollywood's most fascinating tales, with more twists and turns than her enviable curves. Before she was a glamorous actress, before she was a wartime pin-up star, even before she was Carol Landis, she was Frances Lillian Ridst, an insecure young girl from Wisconsin. She was strikingly beautiful, talented and on her way to becoming a movie star, yet she spent her entire life searching for love. She spent more time visiting troops during World War II, travelling hundreds of thousands of miles and coming near death twice than any other Hollywood star. Despite her seemingly glamorous and carefree life, Landis was unable to build a lasting relationship, a fact that contributed to her death at 29. This video examines Landis's life and career in Hollywood, focusing on how her movie career affected her short, unhappy life. She was born on New Year's Day in 1919 in the aptly named burg of Fairchild, Wisconsin, to a farmer's daughter and a drifting railroad mechanic who'd already abandoned the family before little Carol came along. Her mother was no saint either. Charles Fenner, her second husband and the man with whom she'd been having an adulterous affair, was most likely Landis's biological father. The youngest of five children, two of whom died in her childhood, her early years were filled with poverty and abuse. Carol would spend the rest of her life searching for a father figure, even though her real father, Alfred, did make contact with her years later. Carol was such a beautiful infant, she earned the nickname Baby Doll. Given young Baby Doll's difficult start in life, it's no surprise that Carol, one, seemed much older than her years, and two, was interested in being in showbiz. Little Carol covered her walls with photos cut from magazines of movie stars like Mary Astor and Clark Gable. At age nine, she ran up on stage during a local talent show and started to sing. Using makeup tricks to hide her age, she started entering beauty pageants at the tender age of twelve. 
She blossomed into a stunning teenager and began winning local beauty contests. She was an early feminist who tried to form an all-female football team in high school. She married a neighbour named Irving Wheeler in January 1934, but this marriage was annulled in February 1934. They later remarried on 25th of August 1934, but divorced in 1939. She quit high school at age 15 and set herself on a path towards a career in show business. She worked as a nightclub singer and a hula dancer in San Francisco before her 1937 film debut as an extra in A Star Is Born. Throughout her career she would be plagued by rumours that she had worked as a cool girl, but these rumours were false. She dyed her hair blonde and changed her name to Carol Landis, after her favourite actress Carol Lombard. After saving $100 she moved to Hollywood. She landed a contract with Warner Brothers and had a high-profile engagement to choreographer Busby Barclay. She continued appearing in bit parts until 1940 when Hal Roach cast her as a cave girl in 1 million BC. The movie was a sensation and turned Carol into a star. The Ping Girl moniker was attributed to a takeoff on the popular motor oil ad at the time that claimed to take the ping out of an engine and make it purr and the chest due to her impressive 36 double D inch bust. Although she desperately wanted to be taken seriously as an actress, she was willing to pose for endless cheesecake photos if it helped her career. Carol's trademark was a gold cross she always wore around her neck. The cross had been a gift from her friend Diana Lewis. Tall, lean, glamorous and with a strong singing voice, Landis appeared in a string of successful films in the early 40s usually as the second female lead. In a time when many actresses were dubbed in their singing roles, Landis's own voice was considered good enough and was used in her few musical roles. She landed a contract with 20th Century Fox and began a relationship with Daryl F. Sanok. She had roles playing opposite fellow pin-up girl Betty Grable. When Carol ended her relationship with Zanuck, her career suffered and she was assigned roles in B-movies. When World War II came along, she travelled more than 125,000 miles, spending more time visiting troops than any other actress. Landis dedicated herself to the war effort, taking time off from her career to tour the country selling war bonds and entertain soldiers all over the world. Australia, Brazil, Algeria, Bermuda, Scotland, England, New Guinea, Ireland, Guam and New Zealand. She sang and jitterbugged with the boys, spent time visiting wounded soldiers and wrote hundreds of letters to their families. You soon forgot she was Carol Landis, the sex symbol, the Hollywood star, because she was a real human being and had a warm heart that spilled over with kindness. In conjunction with her ability to make private's parts go ping, this no doubt added to her pin-up popularity with servicemen. During a two-month tour of the South Pacific, Carol contracted malaria and amoebic dysentery. She almost died and was hospitalised for weeks, never fully recovering from her illnesses. Besides being an actress, Landis was also an accomplished author. She penned several newspaper and magazine articles about her experiences during the war. She was quite the trooper, but despite the ping and pin-up, Carol never made it to the top. The closest she ever got to an Oscar is when, as a presenter at the 1941 ceremony, she caused a commotion when the slip fell out of her dress. She did make it to Broadway, however, working with Jacqueline Suzanne in the 1945 musical, fittingly titled A Lady Says Yes. She began a romantic relationship with her female co-star as well. Jacqueline would base the character of Jennifer North in her book Valley of the Dolls on Landis. Let me tell you this, every girl in the world wants to find the right man, someone who is sympathetic and understanding and helpful and strong, someone she can love madly. Actresses are no exception. The glamour and the tinsel, the fame and the money mean very little if there is hurt in the heart. Carol just never got a break on the romantic front. Abandoned by both her stepfather and father, she spent most of her life desperately searching for a daddy. The boy crazy teen grew up to be crazy when it came to men. She went on to marry yacht broker Willis Hunt Jr. but ended up leaving him after two months. While touring for the troops she met and married Army Air Corps Captain Thomas Wallace in London 
divorcing him a couple of years later. In 1945, Landis married the extraordinarily named Broadway producer W. Horace Schmidlap, but this marriage also only lasted a few years. She desperately wanted to become a mother, but according to numerous biographies, she suffered from endometriosis and was unable to have children. She was plagued by depression her entire life and attempted suicide in 1944 and 1946. By 1948, her career was fading and her marriage with Schmidlap was failing. She entered into a romance with actor Rex Harrison, who was at the time married to actress Lily Palmer. Landis was reported to be crushed when Harrison refused to divorce his wife for her and, unable to cope any longer, she committed suicide at Pacific Palisades, California by taking an overdose of Saconnell. She was 29 years old. At about 11.30, Rex Harrison calls to speak to Carol. He tries again around 1500, and when he hears that she's still not up, he gets worried and comes around to see what's up. He goes upstairs and finds Carol curled up on the floor by the doorway of her bathroom, her head resting on a jewellery box. Her final night alive that 4th of July had been spent with Harrison. He was the last person to see her alive, and he discovered her body the next morning. Harrison claimed he felt a pulse, but instead of immediately calling an ambulance, he left the house. She's wearing a dirndled skirt, frilly white blouse and gold sandals. Her arms are bent under her body as if she's been trying to get up. Nearby are four empty sleeping tablet bottles. She's been dead for about 12 hours. On her dressing table is a short note. Dearest Mummy, I'm sorry, really sorry to put you through this, but there is no way to avoid it. I love you, darling. You have been the most wonderful mum ever, and that applies to all our family. I love each and every one of them dearly. Everything goes to you. Look in the files, and there is a will which decrees everything. Goodbye, my angel. Pray for me, your baby. The police arrived at around 1600 hours, according to her testimony. Rex didn't call anybody. He didn't call the coroner, the police, or anyone. He just walked out. By the time he returned, the police were there, and it was determined that Carol had been dead for hours. She left two suicide notes, one for her mother, and the second to Harrison, who bribed a police officer to destroy it. After her death, there were rumours she had been pregnant with Harrison's child. However, her autopsy showed that she was not pregnant. Her mother, Clara Ritzfenner, and her sister, Dorothy Ross, never believed that Landis committed suicide. They tried for years to prove that Harrison had been responsible for her death, but could not find any evidence. Her death was a shock to the whole of Hollywood. Many still refused to believe in the version of suicide and claimed that the movie star became a victim of violent death. For her contribution to the cinema, Carol Landis was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. As you all know how much I appreciate you, my viewers, so I want to thank you for your generous comments and for the Patreons. This video would not have been possible without you. And thanks to those who watched the video right to the end. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Carol Landis? Though she appeared in more than 60 films during her short career, Landis was better known for her extraordinary beauty and many romantic relationships than for her acting or comedic timing.